Welcome to Taking Care of Business on Current Radio News Talk, 1180 for the best in Saturday talk radio at 1 o'clock, and on 1230 KGEO at 10 o'clock Saturday, and for the best in Wednesday talk radio on 1410 KERI on Wednesday at 1 o'clock. Your host is Clay Kerner, and I'm Marty Pay, and behind the big board is the producer's producer, Greg Held. Clay, what a show with Marvin Dean from the uh, current supporters for Home... Uh, home. <laughs> High Speed Rail and Jeff Taylor from, uh, say, Bakersfield Committee. Yeah, that was interesting. That was a good debate. I understand uh, this past Wednesday they had a big deal on High Speed Rail also at the yes. Rice Bowl. Yes, they did. Yes, they did for the whole day. Uh, we spent the whole hour on High Speed Rail. It was a pretty good show. But well, I'd, that's your opinion. You didn't like it? Well, I liked it, but you know we're not the ones that really make that decision. Actually, I got a lot of feedback on the show. I got a lot of feedback, a and, lot of emails, a lot of your, Facebook. What was your feedback on the show? Uh, most of it was negative on high-speed rail. But did they like the show? Yeah. yeah people like the show. See, that's all you and I have to be concerned with. Did they like the show? Oh. You know, do, are we getting the information out there? I hope so. Speaking of getting information out there, I want to do a little wrap-up on that great debate. Excellent turnout, great speakers talking about the issues. And I wanted to thank all the candidates for being there. They did a very good job. It was an excellent day. Great day. And you, Clay, did a great job. You and the committee did a fantastic job. I just wish that we'd have had twice the audience. We had a great audience, but I wish yeah. we would have had twice as many. Well, you, you always hope for more, but I think what we have, 200, 250 people? About that. But when you go to a place where every candidate that's running for office is there, mm-hmm. I mean, you think the people would come. The problem was, I think, a lot of people didn't, know how to, didn't find out about it, and that was the major problem. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And what really disturbed me a little bit is the Californian didn't even bother, bother to send a reporter. And that was shocking. Well, did you notify the Californian? We did. Okay. Okay, well, that's, that's their, their mistake. Speaking of great shows, we've got a great lineup today. In the second half, we have an old friend of ours, Doug Johnson, talking about what's going on in the Middle East. But in studio right now, we have one of the candidates of the great debate, Rudy Salas, Democratic candidate for the 32nd Assembly. Rudy, welcome to Taking Care of Business. All right. Thank you, Marty and Clay. Appreciate being here, and thank you for the invitation. Reoccurring guest. We've had Rudy once before. Yeah, this is interesting. This and, is the second time he's been around. And yeah. he came back after the first time. Well, we were nice to him. Well, we were semi. You were nice to him. I, I gave him a little here. bit of a hard time. Well, you know what it was? My turn this time. It was uh, the first time I was here. We got to talk about football. We talked about the Patriots last time when they had that really unbelievable season oh, and i'm wondering if yes. you brought me back to talk about the replacement refs well <laughs> <laughs> or we especially that blown call on monday night can you oh believe God. that call <laughs> oh man and i guess i i heard something this morning about was it 153 million dollars lost in betting no just changed hands well, it, okay, it was changed hands, but yeah. it was lost by the people who had who had Green Bay. Right. Yeah. So it just depends right. on where you had your money. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, Crazy. I hope they do something about that soon. I mean, uh, the last couple of weeks, you could see the game changing just because oh, yeah. they know that the refs aren't going to call certain plays, and sure. you see more grabbing and yeah. jersey pulling, and <laughs> yeah. you know, it just changes the uh, changes the game. I think, and oh, yeah. uh, hopefully, they resolve that pretty soon. And that was that was a, a silly call. I thought. I mean, it was kind of ridiculous. Yeah. But what are you going to do? Was, you know, yeah. Jennings was, came down with it. You know. Yeah, you looked at all the different yeah. angles, and you yeah. see it, and you're like, really? Yeah, and the one ref goes, you know, it's done, and the second ref goes, touchdown. It's like, okay. <laughs> Bottom line is, like everything else, it's all about money. Now, how does money play into this? Because the refs, the, the regular refs want more money. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Just like high-speed rail needs more money. <laughs> oh, well, listen, let's start off there. Let's make a good segue there. All okay? right, let's do that. Okay. Rudy, are you for high-speed rail? I voted against it on the Bakersfield City Council. Okay. But how are you now if you get up there and you're working for Perez, who's for it? Well, you know, I'm not always going to be lockstep uh, with the speaker, with the leadership up there. They already know that. I mean, I had a good conversation with them and said, look, there's certain issues here in the Valley. We just think differently. I like to say we're more pragmatic. (laughs) We're more thoughtful about how we approach things. And so so he knows, um, you know, there's just certain things that we're – I'm not going to be uh, there with them on it. We've had those tough discussions, and so, you know, we'll we'll move forward from there. I, like I said, you know, this is home. I never want to vote against the interests of home. I mean, I still got to come, you know, I, I at the family dinner table. I still got to talk to my family, and they still want to, uh, you know, know what's going on. And and uh, you know, that's really what kind of drives me is trying to do something for back home, the community, and keeping that in mind. Well, it's interesting that Senator Rubio went up there with a no vote, and it ended up being a yes vote. If you want to stay and have an office in the building, you better vote yes. If you don't vote yes, you're going to be in the parking lot. 
Yeah, we can you see know, now Rudy's going to have a little tent in the in the in the park well, there. We're going to be we able to saw visit that in the Republican Party. That's right. Well, both parties do that. Yeah, so exactly. Uh, I mean, we had a past assembly member that was uh, kicked out of the building at one time, and so mm-hmm. you know, I tell people all the time, and I said this even during the great debate. You know, I'm not going up for an office. I'm not going up for a title. I mean, my whole motivation for running is this is home, and uh, you know, Sacramento needs to be fixed, and we need a good. We need good people to be up there and had so many people encouraging and telling me that get up there, Rudy, we need you there. Uh, I mean, it's, it, it just really boils down to that. We need good decisions. We need some pragmatic thinkers. We need people to get off the political soapboxes and just get things done for, for the voters. Our in-studio guest, Rudy Salas, Democratic candidate for 32nd Assembly District. So what you're telling us, Rudy, is that if you do get elected and you do all of a sudden, all of a sudden miraculously you make a a decision that's contrary to what you're telling us now we can have you on the carpet here i mean have you on the radio program here <laughs> absolutely okay okay we've got his assurance that we can do that well he wasn't going up there for an office and he wasn't going up there for money right that's correct so I you're going to donate it's... your salary to charity then i imagine <laughs> <laughs> You know, if I made as much in my private life as you did. <laughs> oh, very good answer, Rudy. I like that. So let me ask you a question about the deficit, okay? Speaking about uh, being lockstep with your party, oh. uh, Governor Brown wants to raise taxes. Are you going to fight him on that if you're elected? And fight your entire party? Yeah, well, there's a number of issues, not just taxes, because, you know, I'm very reluctant to raise taxes as it is. I, I'm thinking of people, I mean, even in my own family, but even my neighbors, friends that are working part time and working on minimum wage. I mean, what does this really do for them? You know, you really have to think about that and take all those considerations uh, into account. And so, you know, it's not just that issue, but there's several issues. You know, one of the things I want to look at, you talk about the budget deficit, and it seems like we're always trying to put our arms around it and, and uh, you know, get a grasp of it. And so, you know, there's a couple of ideas that I had just for the budget. And one of them that I wanted to look at was obviously over in corrections, uh, the Department of Corrections. How many times have we been downtown here in Bakersfield and we go by the hospital and you see how many vans from corrections that are out there? I mean, you see two to three prison guards. But that's but that's federally mandated, Rudy. That's not something the state can change. No, but there's a program that we can implement to save a ton of money. It's called telemedicine. And that is something we can do. Right. So if we use that program, we can save millions uh, upon millions every year upon. I mean, multiply this out over five years. If now we reduce that cost from bringing those prisoners in right through a telemedicine program. Now, I talked to some of the correction guards and they told me and I said, just talk to me honestly. I'm not going to quote you, but just kind of tell me what's going on. And and, you know, it's, it's disconcerting when they tell me. You know, some of these prisoners just want a field trip. They're tired of looking at their cell, and so they say they have some condition, and then they want to, you know, they want a free ride. They want to change, change their scenery, and I'm telling them that's just a waste of taxpayer money. That needs to be eliminated. That needs to be stopped. And so, so when I was talking to them about this, they were like, "Well, you know, we'd like to support you. It'd be, you know, behind the scenes." And I said, "That's fine. Just." Let, let me know where we can get there. At the end of the day, we want to we wanna save the state money. This is a way to do it. Telemedicine program. So, for instance, like t- teledermatology, right? If somebody's going in and say they have a skin lesion or a rash or something that needs to be seen, you can they can see the prisoner at the prison through the computer with sophisticated cameras. And they're doing this already, even in the private sector. So why can't we do it here and save millions of dollars? Let's, let's talk about another potential savings at the prisons that will save millions and millions of dollars, and that's private prisons. Yet the state of California and the prison guards union will not allow that to happen. What's your position on that? You know, to be quite honest, I need to look more into the private prisons. I have worked a lot with the community correctional facilities, the CCFs. Remember, up and down the 99, you would see the prisoners. They were actually from Shafter, the Shafter CCFs. And uh, I was fortunate enough probably about four or five years ago to get them a couple million dollars just because they had lower recidivism rates. They did the job uh, a lot cheaper and a lot better, in my opinion, than the state did. How'd you get them a couple of million dollars? Through a budget augmentation. At the city? No, at the state. At the state. And how did you, working at the city council, how did you end up doing that at the state? Well, I worked at the state at the time. Okay, this was a while back then. Uh, Four or five years ago, like I said. Okay. So you're in favor of private prisons then, or not in favor of private prisons? Uh, To be quite honest, I have to look at it, because some of the data that I've seen, 
show that it's very beneficial, but some of the data that I've seen says, you know, it puts the guards' lives at risk so much that I don't know if a human life is worth that balance. And so I'd question the jury's that. still out. I'd for question me. that statement totally mm -hmm. as to why it would put the guards' life at risk. Well, if you have some information, I'd love to love to see it. You know, before I make a decision, I'd love to see all the data, see all the empirical data, and just kind of. So you'd go against the union if you had to. If it's the right thing to do, yes. Okay, so <clears throat> before we go to the break, I just want to make this clear. Now, we'll have, if Rudy's elected, we can have him come back and climb on him for high speed rail, taxes, and prisons, prisons uh, if he votes, if he doesn't vote against his party if necessary. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to vote we'll the be, way he believes is best. Right, based Absolutely. on our community. Our, our community, right. right. We'll be back in a moment with our in studio guest, Rudy Salas, on Taking Care of Business on Current Radio News Talk 1180.